Before we get underway on the latest episode of Two Geeks, Two Beers, it would be remiss of us not to remark on the passing of Stuart Damon. Uh, Stuart played Craig Sterling in The Champions, the subject of our previous episode released on the 20th of June. Sadly, he died just nine days later. An actor with a 50-year career on stage and screen, but more importantly, I think, seemingly loved by all who knew him. So cheers to Stuart Damon, a champion among men. My name is Stuart Damon. I play Craig Sterling in a new series called The Champions. You'll be seeing it on this channel in the near future. I think you'll find it a very different and exciting hour of entertainment. See you soon on this channel. Two Geeks, Two Beers podcast. Nerdy obsessions, drunken ramblings with Morgan Jeffrey and Tom Eames. off with my little sput, then followed by Tom's foamy outburst. Here we go. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, right. yatar, and welcome to another instalment of Two Geeks, Two Beers. Moore's just laughing his head off. With me, Tom. You have never, you, you have never, sorry, you've never sounded more English than that. <laughs> well, yatar. Yatar. <laughs> Ah, uh, with me, Tom, and uh, alongside me, the ando to my hero, it's Morgan. Hello. Just before we started recording, um, Tom uttered the sentence, "I'm never drunk enough for this. <laughs> never. I'm ne- and like, and, and you've you've been quite drunk at times, but never, never quite no. drunk enough. Not when we're doing, doing it remotely like this. We need the pub no. trip beforehand, so that'll be good when that comes back again. Anyway, for this episode." We're travelling back to what I thought wasn't that long ago, really. But turns out, um, it was actually 15 years ago it started. So, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's the Marmite TV series that is Heroes. So, coming up, uh, a surprise connection with Gilmore Girls. How going a bit too po face can lead to your downfall. And perhaps sometimes revivals shouldn't be revived. Mm. So... Can I... It, 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 it's the surprising connection to Gilmore Girls that Milo Ventimiglia is in both. It's, that's part of it, it. It's part of it. It's, <laughs> not, the whole, it's not the whole link. It, no. If that's if that's the extent of it, I'm like, wow, that is. You're setting a low bar with these like exciting. <laughs> at the start, we're like, you yeah, know, oh, cu- coming up. There's there's another element to it which I thought was all right, all right. mildly interesting. <laughs> so quite um, interesting. First of all, your memories of Heroes. Did you watch it at the time? Were you a big fan? I yeah I remember it was on BBC Two. Uh, I, but BBC Two seemed to be the home of of cult TV uh, around this time, sort of the nineties and and, and noughties. Um, and so I watched the first season. Everyone was raving about it. It was one of the first real examples, I think, of a uh, like one of the, one of the shows coming over from the US mm. and everyone everyone talking about it. Like you had shows like like Twenty Four, but like the conversation seemed a bit more. I don't know, I don't know, scattered. Whereas, like, Heroes really felt like kind of the first of that modern phenomenon you have now where everyone's like, this show, this is mm. the show. It's the, num- it's the number one show. It's the only show you need to be watching. If you're not watching this, get out. You're a loser. <laughs> um, and so I, I watched it. And I think the general consensus with Heroes is that the first, as I'm sure you'll get onto, is that the first season is amazing and then it goes quite rapidly downhill after that. I'll be honest... Didn't even like the first season that much. So, <laughs> look, looking forward to <laughs> everything you have to you have to teach me. Um, well, yeah, I'd say Heroes came um, about in what, yeah, like what you just said. Like I call the golden age of like these TV box sets um, mm. of the mid to late noughties. So it was it was like my third year of uni. It came out, um, and it was um, just before social media ruined the world. Um, and it was at the um, early stages, you know, at best of like MySpace and Facebook, you know, Twitter wasn't even around yet. So a TV networks had obviously seen the popularity of Lost uh, a couple of years before. And um, there was this like this real hunger for this kind of mystery focused ensemble led um, sci fi drama. Um, but also like Lost focusing on these like regular folks that anyone could relate to. Obviously, 
there's more to it, but it, it, the heart of it, the whole point of it was these were regular people that found they had these crazy abilities. So, and um, also yeah. notable as well, like it's before mm. the M- the MCU. Yeah, two yeah. years before and, and, Iron Man came out. Yeah, and now superhero stories are very much you know in the mainstream, but yeah. people were still almost like a little bit embarrassed by superhero stories at this yeah. time. Yeah. The only way you could sort of get away with tel- telling comic book type stories was by making it very grounded in the way Heroes was, as you mm. say, regular folks, but with special powers. If you'd had a show at this time with people wearing, you know, capes and I don't think it would have, I don't think it would have flown, no pun intended. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, uh, I think one, you could argue that, yeah, the appetite for superheroes, um, I know you had things like Smallville and all that kind of stuff, but as you say, it was all a bit dweeby, wasn't it, in a weird way? And I feel like this this kind of kick-started the mainstream success of superheroes. And and Smallville again, the whole point was like he's not going to wear the Superman suit. Yeah. He's not gonna. Yeah. He's not gonna fly. He's it's 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 Clark's Creek. It's super. They always had to like. They were always a little bit embarrassed at this time of making superhero shows or movies. It always had to be like filtered through that. It's like. No, 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 no! It's not. It's not. It's not a superhero show because it's. It's basically a teen drama, but also <laughs> he's the last son of Krypton, and this yeah. is similar. It's like no, nah, it's just. A, it's just a sci-fi drama about you know, uh, regular folk, but also yes, secretly they are. They are superheroes, but don't. Talk about <laughs> <laughs> so, Heroes was created by Tim Kring and aired on NBC for four seasons, only four seasons, from September twenty fifth, two thousand six. To February eighth, two thousand and ten. So it started a good two years after Lost, finished the same year as Lost. So um, it's very much that era of that kind of TV show. Um, uh, only, uh, only, only four seasons, but some would argue three seasons too many. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the series, in case you don't know, tells a story of uh, ordinary people who discover that they have superhuman abilities and how these abilities take effect in the characters' lives as they work together to prevent catastrophic futures. Uh, I'd say it was sort of like um, a superhero version of Love Actually, <laughs> in that they they sort of introduce <laughs> okay, all these different. Okay, expand <laughs> expand on that, please. <laughs> it's because they introduce all these different characters from all over the place, some t- you know, all around the world even. Um, and then you're like, how the hell are they gonna all intertwine? How are they all gonna you know connect with each other? And slowly they did, and then yeah, they even had a few romances uh, in there as well. So <laughs> who, who can forget that scene where Zachary Quinto shows up? On uh, on Milo Ventimiglia's doorstep with the signs, classic. It's a classic scene in Heroes. Also, what, what was that? Catastrophic Futures. That's that's, that's a bad the... name if ever I've heard one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. welcome to the stage. Catastrophic Futures. It's either that or a Muse album, isn't it? It's some sort of musical <laughs> release. Um, and it always had with it a really cool sort of um, style of storytelling, like um, comic books, didn't it? It had um, it had that kind of uh, motif throughout the whole show. So, um, and then it used uh, each episode had lots of different arcs, and then it would build to this big climax. Or at least the first season, <laughs> you know, uh, it's a classic example, as you say. Like you, you remember the first season really well, and I watched all four seasons. Ooh. But you know, anyway, we'll get onto that. So. Heroes began development back in 2006 when uh, Tim Kring, who was the creator of Crossing Jordan, um, came up with the show's concept. He wanted to create a large ensemble saga that would connect with the audience. So again, ahead of his time. You know, this is before, um, you know, uh, the, the Fast Saga and uh, the MCU and all this kind of stuff. The, the I didn't say long. Of... That's, that's, uh, that's a goal of 15 minutes for you to relate one aspect of pop culture to the Fast yeah. and Furious saga. Oh yeah, That's it's a always 15, a link. Fifteen minutes. Okay. But uh, yeah, but most back then I don't think people would think right. This is going to be a. Uh, I mean, it didn't really do it in the end. But <laughs> I, I wanted to create a big like um, you know whole universe saga type situation. Uh, that was the vision from the start. Um, and he said that he began thinking about how big, scary, and complicated he felt the world was. <laughs> Wait till you see what happens next, mate. Um, and wanted to create a character-driven series about people who could do something about it. He felt that a cop or medical drama didn't have characters that were big enough to save the world. Bit harsh. Uh, he came up with the thought of superheroes, ordinary people who would discover extraordinary abilities while still rooted in the real world and in reality. So he was thinking, Grey's Anatomy, don't really cut it, so I need to... You know, up the ante a little bit. 
Uh, so before he began putting his ideas together, he actually spoke with Lost executive producer Damon Lindelof, with whom he had worked with for three years on Crossing Jordan. Uh, he credited uh, Lindelof for giving him ideas on how to pitch the series to the network and advice on the lessons he learned from working on such a drama like Lost. Uh, and when Kring pitched the idea for Heroes to the NBC network, he described the network's reaction as excited, very supportive. Uh, and when he pitched the pilot, he described every single detail, including the cliffhanger ending. And when NBC executives asked him what he was going to happen, what was going to happen next, Kring responded, "Well, just gonna have to wait and find out." So did, they didn't know, did he? It. He didn't know. Didn't know. He didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know. Well, it's a good way. Of good that, question. <laughs> Excellent question. You have to buy the pilot to find out. That's the that's the only way. It's the only way. If only you could do that with all job interviews and stuff. It's like, so what, <laughs> how would you, you know, fit, how would you do this, and what, how would you run run the the company after that? Well, you just have to hire me and find out, don't you? Yeah, yeah you just have to hire me and find out. And they're like, yeah. well, you've shown you've shown me nothing that that proves you could do this job. But you know, what? I'm intrigued. So <laughs> I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a risk on your kid. Oh, I'll let the cut of your jib. After the project was greenlit, they filmed a special 73 minute version of the pilot, which was first screened to a large audience at the 2006 Comic Con. Uh, and it was initially reported that this unaired pilot would never be released, but it was finally included on the season one DVD set. So is that quite a regular thing? Do they? I know Sherlock did that, didn't they? They filmed a whole pilot and then refilmed the entire thing. Because normally the pilot is just the pilot, and they keep it. But pres- presumably this was just like a longer version of the episode that eventually aired. Yeah, Not- well, it sounds. Well, I think no, I think it was a full like with Sherlock. I think it was a full version, and then they once they once they knew what went well and what didn't, they just refilmed the entire thing. I mean, some bits might have stayed in, but um, yeah. Yeah, Sherlock was different because they filmed a 60-minute version of A Study in Pink. And then they were like, "Uh, that's not working. Scrap that. (laughs) Let's do a 90-minute version. Much better. Um, Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Well, originally, Kring uh, wanted the series to have an ever-shifting cast. So, um, yeah, I think he liked the idea of it being like an anthology-type thing where each... um, Maybe each season would be completely different. Again, kind of ahead of its time, really, because that's that's used quite a lot now. Um, but his uh, motivation changed when he realised just how popular the original cast was. <laughs> Therefore, he uh, brought back most of the first season cast for the second season with a few additions, and maybe maybe went too far the other way in the end <laughs> and should have brought some more characters in. Um, but in its first season, the show featured an ensemble cast of 12 main characters, making it then the third largest cast in American primetime television at the time, behind... Now, Lost, obviously. Can you think of the other one at the time? So we're talking mid noughties 2006. I was surprised by this. It's a big show. The show, but the show with the... So, so, the so, most... sorry, so Hero, Heroes has the biggest ensemble cast? No, it was uh, the third largest cast in American primetime television behind Lost and this show. So so this show is number one, is it? Uh, might be. It's one, it's one or two, anyway. I can't, it doesn't say here, but I'm assuming it's one of the top two. Alright. Uh I don't think you'll get not it. Great, not Grey's Anatomy. No, surprisingly not. No. Uh a lot of doctors there. Um I, I no, I don't know. I don't know. Desperate Housewives. Really? Apparently. There's only there's only like four, maybe four yeah. how I mean, how many characters can there possibly be in Desperate Housewives? I've never seen Desperate Housewives, but there's no. to my to my knowledge, I think four housewives, <laughs> uh a sexy gardener, and then maybe like the housewives husbands and that's yeah. like nine that's like nine characters max yeah, so i don't know so how I don't, I don't know, know really. how you expand beyond that maybe the guys that made desperate housewives just made everyone series regulars even though they were barely in it and technically it had the most you know weird anyway thought i'd uh, try that one anyway the plot of heroes is uh, designed to be told in a way again similar to how comic books are told each season of heroes contained one or two volumes so uh, there are several main storylines in each volume, and as the main plots develop, you get these more uh, intimate type, smaller stories within them. So uh, each main character yeah. story is developed separately, and as time passes, their paths crossed like love actually. <laughs> exactly like love actually. That, I, how did you not like start the episode with that? The surprising similarities between heroes <laughs> well, and love actually. That came to me whilst talking. I should have thought of that earlier, didn't I? Do, do you know... Do you know- Oh, so you didn't even plan that connection? No, that was that was original on the spot, mate. <laughs> Eames original. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what the volumes thing actually makes me think of? Is is actually comics don't tend to come in volumes. Graphic novels tend to come uh, in volumes. Okay. And again, yeah. we sort yeah. of move past this now because everyone's just like 
the MCU is enormous. Everyone's just fine. Like, don't be embarrassed by comics anymore. Yeah. It's fine. But there was a real thing around this time and slightly after where no one ever wanted to admit that they were working on something based on a comic. So they would always say it's a graphic novel. It's a graphic it sound, novel. It sounded more, more, more adult. So, like, if you're a member of the cast of The Walking Dead, you'd never say, like... Yeah, I'm starring in uh, this series based on a comic. It always be like, of course, I read Kirkman's graphic novel. It's not a fucking graphic novel, is it? It's a comic. It's a comic for it's children. A fancy comic with, with with fancy artwork. That's all it is. Yeah, just because it's in black and white doesn't make it a graphic novel. <laughs> just because Frank Miller drew stuff doesn't make it yeah. different. No, the rest of still it. a yeah. still a comic for children, yeah. and that's fine. You're allowed to enjoy. You're it's for children, but you're also allowed to enjoy yes. it. Just be comfortable with yourself, like Monster Please. Munch. Yeah, it's just like Monster Munch. It's for yeah. children, but you're also allowed to enjoy it as an adult. It's fine. <laughs> don't don't worry. No one will judge you. Um, so the first season was known as Volume One Genesis, uh, and it began. Now, now that a... now that sounds like a Muse album. <laughs> I think it, it was, wasn't it? Or at least a, <laughs> it was at least a been. song. Um, it, so it begins with a seemingly ordinary group of people who gradually become aware that they have special abilities. Uh, the story develops showing their reactions to these powers and how this discovery affects their personal and professional lives. I suppose in a weird way at the time, the closest we had to it was kind of like X-Men, wasn't it? It was that kind of um, mutants, essentially. They were sort of treated mm-hmm. like that. Everyone had their own different strength and power and stuff. And it was, it was was that was, and again, X-Men was the biggest superhero film franchise at the time. So it was like the biggest sort of connection you could, you could compare, I reckon. At the same time, several ordinary individuals are investigating the origins and extent of these abilities, led by Mahinda, a research geneticist. What, what was that? <laughs> what you, what, what's the oh, hate for Mahinda? No, Mahinda, I, again, he was one of those ones that was great at first, and then they just, like, they had, didn't know what to do with him. and They just they didn't know, no, that I uh, agree, they didn't know what to do with and him. He, he, just, he just became annoying in, in, in the end, but they all, came, they all became annoying. They all became annoying. The show, the show um, became annoying. Its very yeah. existence became annoying. Uh, so Mahinda was a research geneticist he continued his late father's research into the biological source of the powers while Noah Bennett who I don't think he knew that was his name he was just the glasses dude wasn't he um, yeah that's he, yeah the glasses dude that was his uh, alias yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was the lead agent for a secret organisation known only as The Company that wants to control and if necessary terminate those who are gifted um, after only having a short time to come to terms with their new abilities, each of the heroes is drawn into the final showdown. They must each do their part to stop the destruction of the world that starts with an impending explosion at Kirby Plaza in New York City. And of course, we have the often repeated line, save the cheerleader, save the world. I'm um, just thinking, if, any, if anyone's listening to this, having never seen heroes, <laughs> that, that, that that summary you just gave, it's like, <laughs> there's some there's some ordinary people, and there's a... Go- th- th- there's a, and then there's a, but they've got special powers. But then there's some other people who are actually just ordinary. They're actually ordinary. Um, they're the people that John Legend sang about. And and there's a guy called Mahinder. He's really boring. But anyway, there's also another guy, and he's got some glasses. And they all come together in a plaza and save the cheerleader, save the world. And that's season one of Heroes. <laughs> Look, it's sort of an unofficial homage of this show to drunk history, isn't it? We sort of just get through it. But the thing is, we've done... We've done episodes in the past about shows like this, like 24 and Lost, and we're here for like three hours trying to go through every yeah. single season in depth. And it's like, they don't have time for that. They either know heroes already and they want to get on with it, or they don't know anything about heroes, in which case, why the fuck are you listening? So anyway, let's do season one trailer um, to uh, remember the good times. Camera ready? Yeah, almost. Hold on. This looks like 70, 80 feet. This is so unreal. Oh my. Oh my God. Oh my God, Claire! Claire! That was attempt number six. Solar eclipse? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it's gonna be total. Not here, no. Some other part of the world, yes. A global event. What's this? Pinhole camera. It's for the eclipse. Makes one appreciate just how small our planet really is. Do you ever get the feeling like you were meant to do something extraordinary? 
Yes, we are all special. Some individuals, it is true, are more special. You should know who you are and know that it's enough. I think I'm old enough for you to tell me who my real parents are. It begins as a single individual, seemingly ordinary, except they're not. I keep having these amazing dreams. Sometimes I'm falling, sometimes I'm flying. You can fly, why don't you jump off the Brooklyn Bridge? Let's see what happens. I'm seeing things. <laughs> Hearing voices in my head. Like a crazy person? It's more like I'm hearing people's thoughts. Something's wrong with me. What are you talking about? I painted it three weeks ago. Yeah, so? Look at the number on the bus. This happened yesterday. Does this make any sense to you? Let me tell you what does make sense. You're done! You gotta run. He was convinced someone was following him, trying to steal his research. He left everything behind but his computer. Let's get a team in here to bag and tag him. Suresh, huh? It was a professor, Suresh. Geneticist, interesting theories. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Tissue regeneration, levitation, teleportation. Is this outside the realm of possibility? Or is man entering a new gateway to evolution? So there you go. That'll take you back to the uh, autumn of 2006, <laughs> whenever it was. Do you know what? That was a. I have to say that was a bloody good trailer because now I'm like, it was, oh, wasn't I want to yeah. watch yeah. Heroes. That looks, that looks yeah. great. Even though I know, even though I know that'll end in disappointment. I'm like, yeah. oh, it looks really good. Yeah, <laughs> it still looks really good. Um, so the main cast of the uh, first season and throughout, um, led by. Uh, how do you pronounce his name? Yeah, do you know what? I was hoping that we would resolve this. I think, I think it's Milo Ventimiglia, I think. Okay, okay. It's pretty much what I thought it was. Milo Ventimiglia uh, plays uh, Peter Petrelli, who um, I guess you'd call him the protagonist, like the main character of, of the series. Um, he's a nurse and uh, brother of Nathan Petrelli, um, and he gains the abilities of evolved humans who come near him. So essentially anyone that has an ability that comes near him, he takes their power. Uh, power before sponge. Heroes, Yeah, before Heroes, obviously I know I knew him best for, of course, Opposite Sex, the uh, <laughs> uh, great um, <laughs> underrated no- un- early noughties show. See our episode about now and again to hear us chatting about that. Um, and he was, of course, in Gilmore Girls as well before then. Uh, almost had his own spin-off. Uh, and more recently, he's become he's reclaimed uh, fame again, I guess, with This Is Us doing very well in that show. Um, then you had he uh, was he was also uh, Sylvester Stallone's son in Rocky of Balboa. Course. Of yeah. course, forgot about that. Yeah. L- lest you forget. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Hayden Panettiere was uh, Claire Bennett, a high school cheerleader with the power of rapid cellular regeneration, or just she can just hurt herself lots and it's fine. Um, she was, I'd say, one of the breakout stars of the series. I don't think she was that... I think she had been acting since she was a kid, but this was the thing that she became best known for. And since then, she was in uh, Nashville, um, and she dated Milo for a few years. Forgot about that. Um, even though he was that. a bit older than her. But they, yeah, they dated for a bit. Do you know who else auditioned, apparently? This is I Am Debatable, but apparently um, a big star now wasn't then um, who auditioned for Claire Bennett. So now, presumably, if she's the same age, same sort of as, age, yeah. as Hayden Panettiere, yeah. so it would now be about what, like, thirty-ish? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, thirty to thirty-five, I think. Yeah. Go on, tell me. Uh, Emma Stone, apparently, she auditioned D- for it. Didn't yeah. know it. Ah, yeah. Okay. I mean, Super Bad, which was her breakout role, came out a year later, I think. So you know, it didn't take long, but yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, Jack Coleman played Noah Bennett, or horn, horn-rimmed horn glasses is what he was known as, apparently. Glasses man, um, man who wears yeah. glasses. Yeah. He was uh, only like a recurring character at the beginning, but he became, you know, one of the main characters in the end. Um, Claire's father, an employee of the company, yeah, a villain, very much a villain in the first series, but he became, yeah, one of their main characters, and he's not all that bad, he's fine, really. Um, he was best known for playing Steve Harrington in Dynasty in the 80s. Um, Wait, Steve. Heroes. 
Steve Harrington. Isn't that the name uh, of the character in Stranger well, Things? I thought that. Let me double check because I wrote that down. Like, did I just write that back down wrong? <laughs> Steve Harrington. Uh, oh no, Steve Carrington, not Harrington. Ah, I wrote it down yeah. wrong. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, for a second now, I was like, obviously, there's a character in Stranger Things called Jim Hopper, which is yeah. also the name of the uh, of of the pilot that Arnie and his team are hunting in or or trying to track down in Predator Jim Harper. So I was like I've always wondered is that is that like an 80s reference and I was like oh, dynasty maybe it's an 80s reference but no you just you just write it down. Wrong. I just I just wrote it down wrong just not very professional. Um he also Jack Coleman's had roles uh, recently in The Office and Castle among other things and we'll get on to uh you know Obvious things that he's done recently. Um, Massey Oka played Hiro Nakamura, an office worker who possesses the ability to space time manipulation, so travel through time and that. Um, it allows him to teleport, stop time, travel through time. He was the best character, really, one of Hero. He was, he was yeah, great. Yeah, well, Hero. Um, he was apparently one of the last main characters to be created by Tim Kring. He was added to the pilot episode after Kring's wife noticed none of the existing main characters were happy about their powers. So uh, they've got, they were like, yeah, let's put someone in who actually loves loves the fact that he's got a superhero power because that's true. They're all a bit like, ugh, fuck's yeah, sake, come on, or cheer up. By it. Um, he has joined on his quest by his best friend Ando, played by James Kyson Lee. I don't think uh, did Ando eventually get powers. I feel like he might have done eventually. I feel, I feel like I, I checked out by then, but I feel like he yeah. might. Have done. I feel like he might have turned evil as well, like all kinds of bullshit. Uh, also, did that, didn't didn't Ando do Soccer Aid? Like not on about, the show. I've written down. I've written down Soccer Aid story because <laughs> my favourite moment ever was when James Kyson Lee was on Soccer Aid one year. It was probably the two that must have been in two thousand and eight because it would have been yeah. around that time. And I remember he clearly didn't know how to play football because he, the, the, he sort of at one point I think he just sort of picked up the ball and threw it. No, no, it was a corner. It was a corner. It went out for a corner Whoa. and he picked and he picked it up to throw it in because he didn't know. He obviously didn't know what football or how. I was like, how are you here? He must have played football before. Um, I mean, and he was one of those like Adam Richman when Adam Richman played for like five minutes and then, and then Jose Mourinho subbed him off again I feel I feel like Kyson Lee did the same thing but yeah I loved Soccer Aid back then because you'd have weird stuff like Simon Baker played as well in Soccer Aid and then Will Ferrell from, and, and yeah Simon the Baker of the, me- of the Mentalist yeah. it's still yeah. it's it's one of my favourite things about Soccer Aid and, and like people listening to this are probably thinking this is a geek pop culture <laughs> podcast why are you talking about Soccer Aid why are you talking about football but actually one of the best things about Soccer Aid is sometimes the weird people they throw in there yeah. like yeah. like Ando from Heroes yeah. or Simon Baker from The Mentalist or only a couple of years ago uh, Hayden Christensen just like yeah. a- Anakin Skywalker playing for, yeah. playing soccer like yeah. come on yeah, got, very strange oh so good um more recently, uh, Masioka is perhaps best known for his role in the Hawaii Five O remake series. He's he had a lot of uh, episodes in that. Uh, Greg Grunberg was uh, Matt Partman, a police officer with the power to read minds. He essentially had the power of um, uh, Mel Gibson and What Women Want. He could, but for everyone. <laughs> So, so, I like I like that you thought you had to describe to to listeners the power of, of reading minds. You're like the they won't know what Mel that Gibson. is. Yeah, they won't know what that is, but if I say specifically it's like Mel Gibson in what women want, <laughs> then they'll they'll grasp the concept. Thanks for uh, that. Uh yeah, Greg Grumberg is a regular in all of childhood friend JJ Abrams projects. Um mm. He played obviously the pilot in Lost, which you spoke about. Snap Wexley in the Star Wars sequel trilogy he had a few uh, spoken bits in that, uh, and Sean in Alias. But he pops up and everything, doesn't he? He's one of those one of those guys. Um, Adrian Pazdar played uh, Nathan Petrelli, and it says here an anti-hero. I guess he was. I suppose he was. I think um, I think that means he was a protagonist, but also a bit of a dick. Okay, yeah, fair means. enough. Uh, he was a New York senator who can fly, and he was Peter's older brother. Um, I didn't realise he was. He's also the voice of Iron Man in a lot of Marvel animated series. Didn't yeah. realise that. Uh, he's also been in Agents of Shield, Carlito's Way, Lion Game, all sorts. Uh, Supergirl as well on, yeah. on, a, on a comic book theme played Morgan Edge oh. in Supergirl. There you go. Yeah. And apparently uh, he had auditioned to play Milo's father in the proposed Gilmore Girls spin-off, um, focusing on the character of Jess. So there you go. Uh, the casting oh, director so at the time. Yeah, that's the casting the director. So sorry, just like. How? What is the age gap there where he can both play his brother and his father? Good point. Let's have a look. So Milo is now 43, born in 1977. Great listening. Adrian Pazdar is 56. So he's, uh, yeah. Thir- 
13, 13 years older. 12 or 13, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That is, yeah. so that's like older brother, fair enough. Yeah. His dad, yeah. that's harsh yeah. on Pazdar. Harsh. Yeah. <laughs> um, Noah Gray KB played Micah Sanders. Um, he is a technopath in the Micah show. Micah um, Sanders. Uh, the son of characters Nikki and DL. Uh, in real life, Noah is a gifted pianist. Uh, he has since appeared in Code Black and was a regular as a as an even younger child actor in My Wife and Kids, which I didn't realise. Um, and then Ali Lata uh, played uh, Nikki Sanders. Now, not my favourite character of all time, gotta say. No one's um, favourite character. No one's no favourite character. character. Uh, she's a single mother with a dangerous alter ego and super strength so she also played Jessica Sanders her split personality so it just didn't feel like a superhero power it just felt like she was just a bit just I don't know <laughs> it's like she's a problem. I think she actually I think she needs to go to the doctor I don't think she's I don't think it's a superhero power I think she's she's well she's might, might be bipolar or something I don't know I feel like she's, someone needs to look after her um yeah I don't know not my favourite no, character no, no, wonder, no wonder she's not bloody happy Tim Kring's <laughs> wife She's got issues, all right? God, yeah, it it didn't feel like it was a superhero power. It felt like a, yeah. uh, a hindrance. I don't know. I don't. I don't think it actually helped her. Or she did she ever help anyone with her power? Was it ever useful? I don't think it. You know. Um, anyway, in real life, Ali Lata, something of a horror queen, I guess, um, popped up in loads of Resident Evil films, House and Haunted Hill, loads of Final Destinations, all sorts. Final What's she doing now? Yeah. She's been in anything recently? Uh, yeah, she was in uh, The Rookie. <laughs> Oh yeah, with uh, opposite Nathan Fillion, if you, if you if you're interested. But yeah, I, I mostly know her from from Heroes and uh, yeah. Final Destination. She's in. I think she's one of the few characters who appears in both Final Destination and Final Destination Two. She gets blown up in Final yeah. Destination Two, in which the male lead is played by Michael Landis. So obviously, my yeah. favourite of of the Final yeah. Destination series. Maybe we could do Final Destination for Halloween this year. That'd be a good one. You know, yeah, maybe we. Yeah. Was- Sendil Ramamurthy played Mahinda Suresh, uh, the scientist who continues his father's research. Um, he also played Gabe in Beauty and the Beast, which I didn't realise, you know, the TV series. Um, and Jai Wilcox in Covert Affairs. Um, but yeah, he was... The actor was great as, as Mahinda. I just thought the, <laughs> thought the character was just, <laughs> just, just got in the way. Dig, um, dig up. Yeah. yeah. And obviously supporting roles for the biggest uh, breakout character of the show was obviously Zachary Quinto as a Sila slash Gabriel Gray, a superpowered serial killer who targets other superhumans in order to steal their powers. So, yeah, I, I don't know if they meant for him to become such a big deal. I think he was a bit of a Barney Stinson, um, and then everyone loved him. And uh, yeah, Zachary Quinto ended up becoming a huge megastar, being Spock in the Star Trek films and all that. So, um, what was your opinion on Sila in all in, in Heroes? Well, you know, a good a good character, a good villain. I felt like later on he had the classic yeah. thing of being a very popular villain that they then try and like turn into an anti-hero. Yeah. And with but he'd already done such horrible things. He'd done too many it. bad stuff. Certain, certain characters, and I know like, I don't know, Spike and Buffy, or I'm yeah. sure they've done horrible things, but like you witnessed Siler like yeah. butcher characters that you cared about in the first season. Like one of the, for me, one of the biggest missteps of the first season of Heroes uh, I, Isaac, the painter who could like paint the future, played by uh, mm. Santiago Cabrera, great character, yeah. great actor. Yeah. Siler just like, you know, cuts his head open and eats his brains in like early on the first yeah. season, and then and yeah. then it's like, but he's great, really. It's sad he's got a backstory with some watches and shit, and it's like, well, I don't, I don't care. Like, oh, his dad and some watches, and it's like, well, no, yeah. I don't care. He's got a horrible man who eats brains. <laughs> And even that, they tried to, like, walk back. Initially, yeah. it, was, it was like, Siler cuts your head open and eats your brains. And that's how he takes your powers. And then later on, they were like, nah, he just sort of, like, studies your brains. He doesn't eat them. Because they, cause they knew they knew they'd gone too far. They knew they'd gone... And they can't... You can't put... You can't go, this guy who eats no. brains, he's all right, really. So they tried to, like, roll it back. It's, it's too yeah, late. Clearly... Like, like, you, like you slagging off Mahinda. It's like, you've already gone too far. Yeah. And you can't, you can't now pull it back. An amazing bit of machine. How much of it do we actually use? 10%, maybe 20? Imagine the answers we'd have with 100%. Uh, Why is there evil? How many angels can dance on the head of a pin? How do we make love stay? All 
these answers, they're all... They're all right here. Are you gonna eat it? Eat your brain. Claire, that's disgusting. I think they, they thought he was probably going to be in the first season as a few episodes um, and then realised, ah, oh, shit, everyone loves him and everyone kind of fancies him as well, so he can't really get rid of him. It's like the Hannibal problem, isn't it? They were like, <laughs> we, eat, we, yeah, eat, you know. It, uh, he, he eats human body parts and people still love him. What are we, what are yeah. we going to do? What can you do? <laughs> uh, plus there was appearances from Malcolm McDowell, Eric Roberts, and I totally forgot Chris Freckleston was in it. Um, it was Claude yeah. Rains. Totally forgot about that. Um, Chris Freckleston was the first yeah. choice for Silo as well, um, but huh. he didn't. He didn't want to be like a British villain stereotype, so he was like, "Can I be someone else?" And then, yeah, did that. I didn't know that. I did know that it, this was sort of just post um, his his uh, starring role. It might yeah. it might have even been his his next acting role after he did the one series of Doctor Who, and he plays mm. uh, Claude Rains, who's the Invisible yeah. Man, who of course is named after the actor Claude mm. Rains who played the Invisible Man. Um, but I always feel like there's a bit. It's his first scene, Eccleston, where uh, Peter Petrelli like spots him, and Eccleston goes, "Oh, fantastic! You're one of those." And like they wrote that line, but I feel like the way he delivers it was like he was tricked into it. Like he's like, <laughs> "Right, great, I've got this new role. I've left Doctor Who behind me." And then he and then he, he reads the script. He's like, "Oh, for fuck's sake! I got to say, got to say my catchphrase." Like he he, he says it, and he's like, "Oh, you don't want to say that. You don't want to say uh... that." bastards fantastic one of those um so season one received yeah very positive reviews uh during the season uh yeah the american film institute named heroes one of the 10 best tv programs of the year uh doug elfman said uh, the show's super strengths and it's well developed filmmaking smooth pacing and has a perfect cast it views like the first half hour of a fun thoughtful movie um and the show was declared the fourth highest rated show for the first 10 years of IMDb Pro. So from 2002 to 2012, it's uh, the fourth highest rated. So that's pretty good. Pretty good. And then we hit season two, uh, volume uh. two, Generations. Um, it begins four months after the events in the first season. Uh, the main plot of Generations deals with the company and its research on the Shanti virus. Uh, in a flashback Ash- to 1977, Wait, the recent... Oh. A, shan- a shanty virus? <laughs> no, not, not a shanty. She wasn't, like, uh, she wasn't back. Like, uh, her, her songs are just so infectious. Just... Well, they are, but, you know, not, not for this. Uh, it goes back to 1977, showing the research being performed by the company's founders, whose identities were eventually revealed to discover what the effects of various strains of the virus will do to the human and superhuman population. And I sort of like this bit, because it kind of did what I wanted Lost to do, because I wanted Lost to really delve into the Dharma Initiative and all that kind of stuff, but it never really went that far into it. Well, it did, but it didn't really explain where they came from and what was it all about, or you know. And I feel like they saw that and were like, like "Let's make a company, and it's this thing, and it was doing this thing since the seventies." Just like, yeah. like Lost, I'm pretty sure it was seventy-seven as well. They use the same year and everything, but you know. Uh, but then the virus becomes weaponized, locked away at Primatech Paper, the company's facility that they use as a front. And uh, returning to the present, the heroes must come together in an attempt to stop the release of a deadly strain of the virus and avert a global pandemic, funny enough. Um, so, yeah, season two saw new characters, including uh, David Anders as Adam Munro, do you remember him? He was the guy that was like the uh, the samurai warrior who was actually British, but he was around for he never aged. It was really weird. It was, I don't know what I, happened I, there. It was an odd, it was yeah, an I, do, I do remember this, and I thought I hadn't seen any of, any of season two, but presumably... Yeah, yeah, presumably I did watch a bit because I remember him. Yeah, and Kristen Bell as well. She was in it as Elle Bishop. She was in it for a while. Um, but anyway, uh, before we go into it, let's see a little uh, glimpse of the trailer for season two. You saved the cheerleader. So we could save the world. Last season ended with two heroes making the ultimate sacrifice. Now... On September 24th, the new stories begin. This is your chance at a normal life. I have to do this. Yeah. That's what you always say when you're about to do something bad. You don't have to hide everything interesting about you. No. Why? They'll be watching me more closely now. So none of this is real. If someone here found out about me, what would happen? Who 
wants revenge, Mrs. Petrelli? The fate of humanity itself hangs in the balance. One of the main things I remember about the second season of Heroes, actually thinking back, is that uh, they introduced a new sort of friend slash love interest for Claire, Hayden Panettiere's character, and his name is West, which is oh, yeah. which, which which is not a name. And uh, I mostly remember my friend who who had seen. I was a little bit behind, and he had seen more episodes of season two than I had. And he sort of said, "Have you seen the new season of Heroes?" And I said, "No." And he said, "There's a character in it called West. West. It's, it's not a name. No one's called. Who's called West?" <laughs> Like and he's, well, and he's got, really cool, really cool and charismatic, and his name is West. <laughs> What's really depressing about that watching that YouTube video is, um, uh, it's like a time machine because all the comments down below say thirteen years ago. These comments, <laughs> I, it just looks weird because normally, like you still think of everything on the internet being within the last ten years at least. You don't expect it to be double digits, and then you see that, and it's like people commenting, like saying. Already watched the whole season. I don't even live in the US. So freaking cool. You gotta watch this show. Um, it's just scary, isn't it? It's a that time capsule. Crazy. It's fascinating. Yeah, it is a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like the worst. It's like the worst time capsule. It's like if you were yeah. gonna, if you ever wanted to like study a period of human history, don't start yeah. with the YouTube comments. I mean, yeah. that's not that's not that's not the place to start. <laughs> um, so the second season was designed to have three volumes called Generations, Exodus, and Villains. Uh, Exodus was scrapped altogether due mainly, well, partly to viewer criticism, but mainly due to the Writers Guild of America strike that happened at the time, which affected all shows, um, and you could tell that Heroes was quite considerably affected by it. Affected affected all shows, but Heroes more than most. In particular. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, So yeah, so Exodus was not done at all, but Villains was carried over to the third season. Um, As a result, the second season only had 11 episodes, which was 13 fewer than they originally ordered. Um, And originally, the second season of Heroes was to be followed in April and May 2008 by a sixth standalone episode uh, of a new sort of different series called Heroes Origins. Do you know about this? No. Um, It was like a spin-off that was intended as an alternative to a long mid-season hiatus which is what they did for the first season. They used to do that, didn't they? They used to have these little mid-season things that would go on for... I don't know if they still... Maybe they still do it, I don't know. But it led to a big drop in ratings, apparently, in its first season because there was a big gap of, like, three months before it came back again. Um, uh, And it was planned to be then 12 episodes, but then it was um, postponed altogether and then scrapped because of the viewership in viewership decline so i think it was i don't know what it was going to be necessarily i think it was it was going to involve like uh people voting for which characters they wanted to see more of and stuff like that it was going to be like an interactive type thing um but in the it was just bad timing because of the strike and everything they were like ah, it's just let's just not bother with that um so the second season of heroes was criticized by many uh <laughs> everyone both critics and fans for having a much slower pace less engaging storyline and a lack of focus compared to the first season so the problem I had with it is um, it had its, what I call the Pirates of the Caribbean syndrome, right? <laughs> Where the first Pirates film, bloody fun, great, great swashbuckling adventures, f- just funny, silly, great, awesome. The second one comes out and it's all just a bit miserable. miserable. It's all just a bit po-faced and just ugh and just they're all having a horrible time but like, we didn't come here for that we've come here just for some japes and some right. fun stuff who are, who are you tim kring's wife you're like look <laughs> let's, let's just let's just have a laugh a bloody good laugh we don't want to see anyone miserable with mental illness like ali lara's character why can't everyone just be having a great time with their superpowers but that's why marvel is successful and dc isn't because dc's too miserable and up its own ass whereas marvel's just having a great old time and having nice look at the colors look at the colors on screen you know, and Heroes suffered from that. The second season, in particular, and it kept doing it throughout its run. Yeah. It just was just a bit, isn't just a bit miserable and a bit. Eh. I see. I, I sort of like checked in and out of, of season two of Heroes, but the mo- season two, everyone goes on about like Peter Petrelli's Irish girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll talk about that now. Shall I? Now you yeah, brought talk it up. About it, talk about it. So just yeah. as, just to say, as an outsider, like who yeah. didn't really watch season two, you go. Season one of Heroes, that was great, yeah. Season two of Heroes, oh, fucking Peter Petrelli travelling through time with his Irish girlfriend. The yeah. worst. And, like, explains to me the why... Worst. why. <laughs> exactly. Oh, like, 
<laughs> they okay. Well, the, the actress who played um, Caitlin, the Irish yeah. love interest, you know, she's you know perfectly well. But we didn't care. I didn't. I don't want to know about. I don't care who she is. Who is she? Why is she here? And it's one of those. It was the Natalie Emmanuel situation where I think she's doing her own accent, but doing it really badly because American <laughs> audiences need to understand it. And so it's so Irish. It's silly. Anyway. Um, and it's just, yeah, this stupid storyline. Bear in mind, it was only like 11 episodes. So yeah. I don't know what, how they were able to do this, but it was just this like miserable kind of seeing apocalyptic future and going to these different timelines and all this kind of stuff. And it was just over, it was just too whatever. Anyway, so he was with this um, girl called Caitlin and she helped him on um, in his adventures, I guess you call it. And they got transported to um, the future where um, the Shanti virus, the Ashanti virus, um, has uh, devastated the world. Mm. Um, so. So it, it, you know, if it's an Ashanti virus and they can travel through time, that means yeah. that they're, they're they're always on time, <laughs> presumably, because they've got. They've got they've you just got need time. Ja Rule as well, don't you, for that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, so the Ashanti virus has taken over the world in this future, um, and and while he's there, annoyingly, he gets separated from Caitlin, and he ends up being deported back. Um, what well, says here? No, yeah, so. That's what happens. So they're in this future. They get separated, and she in this this different future. She gets deported back to Ireland for whatever reason. Right. So she's she's stuck there, and then he tries to teleport teleport back to the present with her, but he accidentally leaves her behind. How he does that? <laughs> Not very good boyfriend, are you? But then it says because of the writer's strike, probably they had to end it early, and they just yeah. weren't able to finish things. Her ultimate fate is unknown. But when Peter destroys the Shanti virus in the present. The future she was trapped in is erased, most likely erasing her from existence as well. Just never bothered explaining it. Just a horrible death in some what? sort of other timeline. What, what do you care? You hated her. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't want her to die. She didn't deserve to die. Like, no, come on. No, she was very annoying, but she didn't deserve to die. At well, least she with did... Nikki and Paolo, we saw them die. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. I mean, she didn't. She didn't die. She was just erased from existence. Although, yeah. <laughs> Although, if she was. She was in the future, but she... No, actually, yeah, no, she would be dead. She would it's be like dead. a par- it's a parallel dimensions future, essentially, that she's right. stuck in. So it's, yeah, odd. But that okay, was just an then. example of how badly season two was de- dealt with. Um, I think they just forgot about big plot points and just couldn't be asked to go back to it and in look, future seasons. Look, the writer's strike, you know, er- yeah, everyone, it, it had, bad, everyone had to yeah. down tools. It, it was tricky. Yeah. But, tw- you know, certain shows dealt with it better than others. 24 just gave us a brilliant little TV movie. Yeah. And they're going, yeah. ah, right, oh, what can we do? TV movie with Robert Carlyle as Jack Bauer's best mate? Brilliant. Yeah. I'll watch yeah, that. Do it. Where, yeah. Whereas Heroes just went, uh, leave her in the future and then we just sort of kill her off screen? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> What could you call it? Because it's like jumping the shark. You could call it the um, the, the uh, <laughs> killing killing the girlfriend or something. Where it's like when when someone just couldn't be asked to finish a storyline. It's just like um, just. Uh, I feel like I feel like we should, yeah. I feel like we should come up with a more fun name for it than killing the girlfriend. <laughs> like there's probably something a bit more catchy that we can come up with. Murdering the woman. <laughs> No. Just losing the plot, I suppose. That's that's the good way of saying it. Yeah. Um, so in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, uh, Tim Kring spoke about the criticisms of season two uh, and the 15% decline in ratings. Uh, he said that he felt he made mistakes with the direction of season two. He had thought that the audience was looking for a build-up of characters and the discovery of their powers like they had in the first season, um, when instead viewers were actually wanting adrenaline. Um, Kring also outlined what he felt were problems with plot development stating that season two took too long to get into the big picture story and that Peter's vision of the viral Armageddon should have occurred in the first episode instead of the seventh. (laughs) Um, He feels that it would have been better to introduce new characters within the context of the main storyline rather than unattached arcs. So yeah, do you remember there was a brother and sister duo, uh, Maya and Alejandro, who no one gave a shit about. They were like Mickey and Paolo, essentially. They just got introduced and they just didn't really have anything to do with the plot. They weren't, and they were just... It was one of those things where you only had 11 episodes. Stop focusing on them. I don't care. I don't to be care fair, about them. They didn't know they only had 11 episodes. No, but, no, but once you did, it, it, find a way of getting them involved. If yeah. you're gonna, it's if not, you're gonna it's they were like, look, we've only, oh shit, we've only got 11 episodes. Fuck Caitlin. Leave her in the future to yeah. die. They should have done the <laughs> yeah, same with fuck them. It. Yeah, okay. So it, you could just say, look, season two was a bit of a bust altogether. Yeah. Uh, but largely ruined by the writer's strikes. So you're like, okay, right, come on, lads. Right, come on. Let's pick fresh, it up. Fresh start. You know, yeah, come on. We're all That's behind us now. We, we, yeah, we, we know that you you're, you can do good telly. So let's 
Return to Past Glories. Let's do season three. Let's 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 do it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Season three. Season three. Yeah. Good. So it had uh, 25 episodes this season. So 25 episodes. That's a lot, isn't it? That is Nothing. Nothing's that long anymore, is it? No one's got. No, the, no one's got the patience. No, it was twenty four. Obviously, there's a reason for it, and you yeah. wanted twenty four episodes. But even that, even but, that, yeah. when they bring it back now, it's like you know, twelve episodes. No one's got. Yeah. Time. No, I've got. No. I'm busy. I'm, got, I'm looking at my phone. I've got time for twenty four episodes. Mad. Uh, the first, the first thirteen episodes of the season made up the third volume, villains, and then the final twelve comprise the fourth volume, fugitives. Um, so in this season, um, it began with the assassinated assassinate. <laughs> So this season began with the assassination attempt of Nathan Petrelli. Do you know what? By Peter, by, by Peter Petrelli from the future. I don't remember any of that. Do you know why you tripped up there? You were trying to say assassination and Nathan at the same time, which <laughs> which it is in, in many ways. Assassination. It, it's, it's, yeah. it's the assassination of Nathan. It's an assassination. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, several villains with abilities escape from the company's prisons. <laughs> Uh, they end up joining with Arthur Petrelli, he's like the dad of Peter and Nathan at this Pinehurst company, and they want to get a formula that gives uh, everyone powers. And uh, he's a bit like um, uh, what's his name? Um, big bad villain from Marvel. Forgot his name. Thanos. What's his name. Thanos. That's the one. Yeah, he's a bit like him. He thinks it will make a better place if everyone had abilities. And it's like, all right. Uh, and then is that is that, uh, is that is that is that Thanos's plan? I don't think it is. No, no, not that. That's not his plan. But you know, he, he had a vision to, to make the world a better place by being a dick, essentially. Right. So okay. That's okay. what you know. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Um, and then he got Siler again. This is where it was peak. Like, let's try and make Siler good. Let's let's really do our best to make him a, a goodie. Uh, Peter lost his ability at one point. Then Mahinda got an ability. Um, and uh, Hero is now a, a you know a proper double R bastard samurai warrior and all this and. You know, you know, I had its moments, I guess, but it's just too complicated at this point. Um, the second part of season three, titled Fugitives, uh, involved what happened after Nathan failed to produce some fauna or shit. I still feel like I'm doing drunk history on this. Um, and then after the destruction of both Primatech and Pinehurst, the heroes attempt to lead normal lives until Nathan tells the President of the United States, played by Michael Dawn, which is amazing, um, about people with abilities. Um, he then runs a government force headed by... Um, Emil Danko played by now how do you pronounce this guy's name we've talked about him before um, Zelko Ivanek is that him you know that guy who was in everything oh, look, what happened I to just, him he was in everything he was look, I, 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 yeah I know I know exactly who you mean bold bold little creepy yeah. fella brilliant yeah. Brilliant! He's yeah. great in everything. He, he was yeah. yes, he was he was in every show in the noughties, and good because he's great in everything. <laughs> Damages twenty four heroes the event. Yeah. Great, great, great! I'm pretty, sure he's the, I'm pretty sure he's the same character in the event. I think they just went, ah, oh, should just poach him. No one will notice. Well, he's ne- he's never going to play like a romantic lead, is he? He's always going to play like a little shit. This guy. Yeah, yeah. Zyko, I think it was in Zy- Die Hard Four as well. Zyko um, I- Ivanech. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and also, it introduced the character of Tracy Strauss, the triplet sister of Nikki, also played by Ali Larter. So, according to writers Joe Pekaski and Aaron Kalit, um. Nikki was written out of the series uh, and replaced by Tracy Strauss so that Larta could st- stay in the show but have a different role because they realised they couldn't do anything more with with Nikki. So like, okay, well, we bloody love Ali Larta and the fans love her. They didn't. Let's <laughs> let's keep her in it and make a brand new character. That that would be great. Wait, so what? So wait, so so was this another of her split personalities or she was just playing someone else? At this I point? think this was a, just a different character. This was a triplet sister of Nikki and this other g- woman. Who I don't know if we met her. It's not. There's not the split personality because that was a split personality. It wasn't so she had. Person. She both had a split personality and two two identical twin sisters. I oh, actually know. Maybe, maybe she, the split personality was of the sister. Maybe she died. I can't remember. I can't remember. Something like that. Anyway, like actual heroes fans, they all have tuned out by now because we've been slagging it off for the last half an hour. But look, um, I didn't agree with that. I thought that was silly. <laughs> just bringing a new character. But like, look, but look, I didn't agree with that. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, here's season three's trailer to just give a little taste of that. Just, just, just so you can get an actual sense of what it was about, because that did not help at all, at all. On September twenty second, a new chapter will begin. Since before you were even born, I was finding these people and locking them away so they couldn't hurt anybody, because they will kill and they will terrorize and they will cause unimaginable destruction to the world. They're villains, Claire. 
Welcome to Level 5, a secret prison for the greatest threat to society. All of us with these powers. But we know we're not alone. This is where evil resides. Where'd they go? Escaped. And they're clear. A new discovery. There are quantum leaps in science that one dreams of being a part of. It's evil. Will change all their destinies. A single syringe could give powers to anyone. One hero. You stole something from me. Meets his match. You mean this? <gasps> Get out! Gotta go. In this season, no one is safe. I'm starting to wonder if I'm even human anymore. Something could go wrong, and it changes everything. Good will battle evil. Is there anybody here? They could destroy us all. Choose a side. What happened to you, Claire? I'm different, remember? Special. I can fix all of this. I always loved you. Heroes. Mondays on NBC. I got no idea what's going on at this stage. No, to be it's just it, it's just focusing too much on the the just the everyone's against each other and having a horrible time and it's all mean spirited. Meh. No, make it fun and fun. Like obviously, you want a bit of danger. Just don't make it so like. Ugh. Make it, it fun slum. and fun. Make, Make it, it fun, fun and, and fun. fun. <laughs> you couldn't, oh my couldn't, God. couldn't think of a second adjective. Make I'm it so fun angry. and get my words Make out. it fun and fun. Make it double fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anyway, uh, that's season three for you. I mean, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. It, it just, okay. it, it was just a lot of. Um, uh, yeah, they they all became like these super villains all against each other, and they all had slick back hair, and they all looked. They all, I don't know. They just, I don't know. It was just. I don't want to watch that. I don't want to see it. Like I want, I want, no. I want you all getting along. I want you all fighting, joining together, and getting the have get together and fight the bad guys. Don't fight each other. That's just no. We didn't come here for that. Um, but you know, it, it it's one of those series where by season season two and three were almost okay, but <laughs> it just it just no. And uh, you watched it out of some loyalty because yeah. you really loved the first season. And then you were just hoping, it, and then you realise you got to like episode twenty of season three. Go, oh, am I actually enjoying this anymore? It's sort of become a chore for me to watch this. I don't know why I'm watching it. It's it. it's not a glowing recommendation that that it was almost okay, <laughs> almost okay, <laughs> but not. I, I yeah. Anyway, season four then. Um, that was right. uh, volume five, Redemption. Uh, this takes place six weeks after the events of season three. If you care. Um, what makes me laugh is that by this point no one gave a shit so whilst season 1's wiki page is really highly detailed loads mm. of stuff on season 1's wiki page l- lots of stuff going on season 4's plot description is just new characters introduced in this season mostly centred around a carnival troupe and their leader like that's it that's all that's the plot it. for the plot said with such stank like you can, <laughs> you can just read the stank in that new characters introduced in this season mostly, mostly centred around a carnival troupe and their leader great um, so the, the main new character was Robert Nepper fresh off playing Teabag in Prison Break uh, he's playing the villainous Samuel and yeah I, I mean again I think I think I watched all of this season I think maybe by halfway through I just forgot it was on and then didn't really see how it happened um, but I don't think most people pay attention anymore but anyway here's a little <laughs> now that I've uh, bigged it up that much here's, uh, here's a little taste of season 4 well I can't wait to watch <laughs> Joseph and I have had two families. The first one, well, let's just say it didn't work out too well. But over the years, we made ourselves a new one. There's a lot of change going on with me. Life, it's all about new horizons. It keeps you from getting stale. I don't want to pretend to be anyone but me. I just want to be Claire Bennett, daughter of Noah Bennett. Just be careful, sweetheart. Family is something that Joseph and I needed. Daughter's protection from the outside world. A world that we never understand or appreciate what made us different. A world that only fears us who we are. I found myself a shadow. Then all those pieces in me came floating back together with one cohesive thought. 
killing all of you. Maybe we're both looking for redemption. No one? No one? There are those out there who will never accept us for who we are. And now we found ourselves gathered at a fork in the road, and I ask you, which one Joseph would want us to take? One way is paved with fear. The other road is paved with redemption. Hi. I'm here to save you. Down that road, we stand in unison and we show ourselves. So where do we get our hands on a dead body? They will accept us or they will fear us. What you said this morning about redemption, I'm hoping that's possible. Yes, well, I left out the part of our vengeance. There are those out there like us. One by one, they will come. What'd you do? I didn't do anything. They'll find their way home again. His name is Hiro. Hiro Nakamura. But he was here at the carnival. What? How long ago? Fourteen years. Oh, we've got it. Fine. We'll be strong. I've stopped. Cold turkey. I'm out. There is no such thing as out, detective. Not for people like us. I say it's time. We found our way back home again. Do I know you? The name's Samuel. And I think we're gonna be great friends. So what was all that about then? I, I haven't got a clue. And I, I had definitely stopped stopped watching by this point, but you know sometimes you like fall down a Wikipedia hole and just sort of like looking up like T V shows you used to watch and what happened later on yeah. and getting annoyed generally about the fates of certain characters. And i think, right, I think I'm right in saying that by this point, Nathan Petrelli, Adrian Pazdar's character, is dead, but Siler is somehow like Oh in, yeah, in in his body, and but thinks that he's Nathan Petrelli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It's just so a, kill, a, kill, kill, kill off a great character, but then have him sort the actor still in the show, but playing a different character. Ugh. Yeah, nah. you're not face off. Come on, like, what are you doing? Um, and and you know Robert Nepp is a great actor, and he's brilliant in Prison Break. But I feel like they focused too much on him. He became like the main character of season four, and it's like, well. Who's this Johnny New Pants coming in? <laughs> He's like <laughs> taking over. Really weird. Um, anyway, um, I, I can't be asked to go for the entire plot. But anyway, the series finale ends. Um, spoiler alert, everyone. Um, by opening the non existent volume 6 Brave New World, in which Claire reveals the existence of people with special abilities to a group of reporters and photographers. Um, the series mimicked how it started, with the last scene showing Claire jumping on from a Ferris wheel and um, saying. Um, that was attempt number, I guess I've kind of lost count. So it, it went back to where it, where it began at the very beginning. So so, so they were they were presumptuous in that they, 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 they had a, a volume six that had just yeah. kicked off at the end, but it never yeah. actually happened. Cause yeah, I don't know if that was, that was what they planned. Um, didn't sound like, um, but I think they did expect a fifth season. So yeah, you're probably right. They probably did think that was going to be the next chapter. So yeah, seasons three and four had an equally harsh reception. Uh, Los Angeles Times said, even just a half hour in, it's difficult to it's difficult not to wish everyone would just lighten the heck up. The graphic novel noir feel is becoming increasingly oppressive, and everyone is just so grim. I agree. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The New York Times. Uh, what, I, what I like, what I like about it is half an hour in that show. That each episode would have been up forty-two minutes. So the critic reviewing that, he got thirty minutes in. He's like, I can't fucking watch anymore. I've got to start writing. <laughs> shit. Sh- it's shit. Like he couldn't, he couldn't hold back for another twelve minutes. Uh, the New York Post said this show, which was once so thrilling and fun, has become so full of itself. Its characters spouting crazy nonsense. Yep, fair enough. Um, despite the show's uh, low ratings, it averaged uh, five point nine million viewers by season four, compared to season one's thirteen plus. Um, Tim Curring was fully expecting a fifth season. Um, however, while creator Curring was hopeful over the show's future, many media insiders were not so confident. <laughs> Uh, there was growing speculation on some news sites that NBC would cancel the series at the conclusion of its fourth season, or that it might renew the show for a fifth and final season by ordering like a shorter, you know, run like six episodes or something. Um, but then in uh, May for May fourteenth, twenty ten, NBC announced it was indeed cancelled. Um, so despite its poor three out of four seasons, uh, there was enough intrigue and fan love for Heroes that it wasn't the end. Um, it did have a chance to redeem yeah. itself. So, because even it's, despite all that, Heroes had a big fan base. It was, it was still, you know. Had, well, you know, I think it's a bit. I think it's a bit like when you know, if you've been in like a bad relationship and then you break up because, because like, you know, 
three quarters of the time it was actually really bad. But then you yeah. break up and you you only sort of you look back and go, oh, I just remember the good times. And then like you know you give it when you're when you're in it, it's just terrible. Yeah. But then you like you give it a bit of time, give it a bit of distance, and you're like, actually, oh, I remember the good times. And then you get tricked, you get tricked yeah. into going back. And that's but what I mean, that's what this was. It's like Guns and Roses when they release a new album. You think oh, they, they might they might do another Appetite for Destruction. They might be they might do it. They might do it. And yeah. Then they never yeah. quite. You just get. Quite do you just get another. Yeah. No. Chinese democracy, whoever it was. I was um, going to say you just get another, you just get another Chinese democracy. Yeah. So, uh, flash forward to 2015, and we got Heroes Reborn, which was a mini series of just 13 episodes and a continuation of Heroes with Tim Kring coming back as executive producer. So, what was your reaction when that got announced at the time? Were you was that a surprise? Because it was there was yeah. like a few, there was a few of those revivals around that sort of time, weren't there? But this this was very much a what are they thinking? It was. Yeah. Um, you know, wisely 13 episodes because people had long since stopped making uh, 25 episode seasons. Um, I, I can't remember. Was this this so in between? I think it was in between um, Heroes and Heroes Reborn. Tim Kring made the show Touch with Kiefer Sutherland. Oh yeah, I, um, which I, again, was that which was, was a show that I had so much promise. I think it's because it's Kiefer, and I just love watching him in anything. And I really yeah. wanted it to be good, and it but, never quite but, got there. Never quite got there. It was, it, it was a show about a bunch of ordinary folk scattered across the world who happen to some of which have incredible abilities. Where did he get that idea, Tim Tim Kring? Uh, <laughs> he, he, he he's a pony with so many tricks. God, I haven't thought um, about that show since I saw it at the time. I haven't even thought about the, it. Sorry. The best thing about Touch... No one has. The best thing about Touch was that Kiefer was often uh, chasing his, his son, uh, Jake, played by uh, D- David Mazouz, who went on to play Bruce Wayne in, in Gotham. Um, yeah. But he would spend a lot of the show chasing Jake around, just shouting, Jake! Jake! And that became, like, the damn it. Like, 24 had the damn it, and Touch had the Jake. Um uh. God. You can you can if you if you drink every time Kiefer Sutherland says Jake in an episode of Touch, not that you're ever gonna. Where are you ever gonna? Like you're never gonna watch an episode of Touch. I'm not sure it's even like available to watch no. anywhere. Um. Anyway, sorry. Carry on. Um, yeah. No. I, I. I. Yeah. I just remember thinking it's a very odd decision given that the legacy of Heroes at this point was so blemished. Yeah. Like really gonna be about Heroes? All right. But guess, they had a chance to do it if they did it properly. If they brought back all the main characters and they were like, right, we're going to yeah. bring in new writers. We're going to reclaim its throne of, of it being a brilliant show. We're going to bring everyone back. It's going to be great. But they just didn't, you know, <laughs> they just didn't do it. Um, the series takes place one year after a terrorist yeah. attack in uh, Odessa, Texas. The government blames those with extraordinary abilities, known now as evolved humans or EVOs, who are forced into hiding when vigilantes systematically um, hunt and kill them. Uh, Jack Coleman was back as the main character, Noah Bennett, but uh, Claire had died off screen. So yeah, she so 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 a famously she, like she can't she's die. Instruct- <laughs> she's in. She can't die. That's like that's like, that's that's that, that's like that's key. That is yeah. key to her character. The fact that she can't die, but no, she's dead. Also, the whole point of the first season, you know that thing where like you, you like you sort of um, ruin something that was great. By yeah. like the whole point of the first season, the catchphrase, the mantra, save yeah. the cheerleader, save the world, and it's like save the cheerleader. Nah, she died actually, so don't worry about it. It's <laughs> okay. like, it was all for nothing. It was all. all nothing. It was all. For, it was all for nothing. It's like like um, Terminator Two, where the whole point. Well, ter- Terminator One, right? The whole point is, is you got to save Sarah Connor. Got to s- save Sarah because she's going to give birth to John Connor, who's the savior yeah. of humanity. And then it's Terminator 2, and you go, right, now John is a little kid, and you've got to save John Connor, because he's going to be the saviour of humanity. And then yeah. in Terminator Dark Fate, they just go, nah, he just uh, dies. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, well, so what? All, it was all pointless. After all that, it was all pointless. Annoying. And that's, uh, that's how I felt about that. So. But not only that, like, it was otherwise brand new characters, and I, yeah. don't, I don't care. Um, if you're doing a revival, the whole point is you want to bring, see the characters again. Well, imagine Ma- if they do, Mahindra imagine was if back. They do, yeah, well, they did bring out. They did bring back a few others um, in little, in minor roles, like yeah, uh, Micah, Hero, uh, Mahinda, and Matt. They all appeared in in various guises. But like, imagine if they did like a Gilmore Girls revival, like they did, but for some reason Lorelai wasn't in it. They just didn't bother. It's like, well, what's the point? We're coming here to, to revisit our, the love of these characters. <laughs> I've 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 fucking come back to revisit my favourites from Stars Hollow. How dare how dare you not bring back Lorelai? What were you thinking? 
I want to see. Hell, Gilmore I want to fucking I, love it. I, I want to uh, see Jess. I want to see Dean. I want them all. I want them all back. And, and they provided it. They provo- they provoked everything in the Gilmore Girls arrival. It was brilliant. <laughs> and because right, go off on a tangent. Gilmore Girls, the final season originally, season seven, I think it was, was wasn't very good. The revival no. had its chance to re- to redeem itself, and it did, and it was brilliant, and it was very good. Well done, heroes. Didn't do it. Had its chance. Didn't do it. Anyway, here's a trailer. <laughs> For, for the Gilmore Girls revival, we've changed tact. <laughs> Talking about nothing but the Gilmore Girls from now on. <laughs> it doesn't matter how ordinary you think you are. We all have the potential to be heroes. I get the feeling that you were meant to do something extraordinary. I mean, it's a pointless trailer to show you because it was all music, but. Um... You know, you got a little glimpse there, and 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 they just repeated the lines. They said the line. They said the line in the original one. They repeated it, but not with any of the main characters. So fuck you. Um, and again, looking looking at the uh, comments on the on the thing, it's just I miss the old characters. They ruined it by replacing some of the best characters. <laughs> it's just people going, "What the fuck is this? I really miss this shit. What's this? Give me give me season one again." Uh, makes me laugh. Anyway, um, so yeah, Heroes Reborn received mixed to negative reviews from television oh. critics, uh, with a critic score of fifty three out of hundred on Metacritic, which I think is pretty good actually. I thought it would be worse than that. Um, on Rotten <laughs> Tomatoes, it received forty three percent. Well, it was criticised for overuse of special effects and melodrama. Um, of the show's reception, uh, Kring said, "Well, you, when you make a show like that, I was adamant about that show." being a 13-episode event series and having a close-ended quality to it. I'd always felt that one of the issues of Heroes was the ongoing nature of it was difficult to sustain, so I really loved the idea that it was just a 13-episode event series. And when it was over, it was over. I don't know that the audience ever really understood that that was the initial plan from the very beginning. That's a good way of saying it's not coming back for a second season, isn't it? Um, so I think that it got a little confusing for the audience as to whether it was a reboot of Heroes or whether it was just an event series. As much as we I try like, to say, yeah, yeah, I like I like the idea that if something only happens once, you just call it an event. So like, like if it's a series that gets cancelled and there's no second season, you go, it was an event series. And like, you know, you hook up yeah. with a girl and then you say, hey, how about doing that again? She's like, no, definitely not. And you're like, well. <laughs> It was an event. It was an event. It was a one time it was a one time event. Oh, God. Um and apparently he they described it as being like technically season ten because they wanted to pretend that all this time heroes has been going on in the background. So you didn't see him, but this is as if season ten. So it's it's all like you know, like like red like Red Dwarf, where there's sort of no series nine. Yeah. That kind of thing, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so that alas is probably it for heroes. Uh, thought if that was if if that my, my my main thought is if that was series ten, thank fuck I didn't have to sit through series five, six, seven, eight, and nine. To be honest, no, <laughs> it's no, not. No. It's not the it's not the worst show of all time. You know, I'm, it's I'm not. I, I feel, uh, Do you know the reason I'm slagging off so much is because season one was so good. It was one. Yeah. It's, it's one of in ter- if you if you're picking just seasons of brilliant uh, shows, just a, different seasons. Heroes yeah. is one of the best of all time. Yeah, look. If you, yeah, I agree. Uh, we've been very harsh on it, but that's because we're not angry. We're disappointed. Yeah. If you if, <laughs> it, look, he- heroes as a whole is never going to make you know best. No, of, not now. No. Best be- best TV show lists of all time. However, if you're talking best single seasons yeah. of all time, the first season very good, and yeah. and then it's just there's writer strikes and there's Irish girlfriends murdered in the future, <laughs> and there's characters with slick back hair turning on each other. And there's Robert Nepper, and there's far too much Robert Nepper. Yeah. And then the nepotism, and then there's, <laughs> and then there's there's a revival which no one asked for. And no. where are, where are the characters? What's going on? Uh, yeah, just just a, just a bit of a mess. Do you know they should have just listened to Kit, Tim Kring's wife? 
<laughs> Tim Kring's wife, Mrs. Kring, she knew it, she knew where it's at. She knew what was going on. But I reckon you could probably still watch season one just on its own because it, I don't think it had a massive cliffhanger. Actually, no, it did have a cliff- cliffhanger. Maybe if you edit out the cliffhanger at the end and just sort of end where, where they save <laughs> so, the day. Uh, yeah, so, it's, it's good. So, so, yeah, so they, 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 they you know, um, Hero turns up, he says yeah, Yatar, yeah. he stabs Silo with the, with the katana, with the sword, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then uh, <laughs> Peter and, uh, and Nathan just sort of hug. And they yeah. don't fly off. They just yeah. he's like, yeah, it ends Peter, there. Yeah. Peter, Peter, Peter's like, I'm gonna explode and Nathan's like, give me a hug, it'll be fine. And then it ends. <laughs> credits. Ends. Yeah. Cuts yeah. credits. Heroes. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Only one season. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, that is it. Um for more look back, you know, looking back at other T V show <laughs> classics. <laughs> Do that again. Brilliant. That was shit. Brilliant. For uh, for more for for more look for more look back. For more looking back. It's all it's all there. All the look backs. So that is it. For more memories of uh, other binge-worthy TV classics, uh, such as Lost 24, Doctor Who, plus a host of all kind of topics from video games to films, to kids' TV, all sorts, then head to twogeeks2beers.com and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. And please give us a rating or review on your chosen platform. It always means a hell of a lot. And uh, all our episodes are also on YouTube if you prefer that. So go and subscribe to us on there too. Did you say it means a hell a lot? I did, didn't I? I regretted it instantly. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like you're someone cool and American from the early noughties. It means a hell a lot. Uh, yes, you can also uh, find us on all social media channels: uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're at Two Geeks Cast on all of those. We also have a Patreon, uh, which is patreoncom slash Two Geeks Cast. That's it. Yeah, that's the one. There we go. Uh, and what you can do there is if you know, if if the fancy takes you, um, you know, fling us a couple of quid, uh, become a Patreon or a Patron. So on there, we'll post uh, special mi- exclusive mini episodes, which we'll only ever post on Patreon, uh, teasers and clips. And if you pay enough, you can even get your own mini sode, which is exclusive to you on any subject of your choosing or a full length episode. Uh, that's also available. Uh, so yeah, check out our Patreon page. Uh, anything you donate goes back into producing the show, paying for our equipment, paying for the services we used to record the show. We would really, really appreciate it. We would hella appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. And then the other way you can get in touch is on our email. Uh, so that is podcast at two geeks two beers dot com. So give us a shout out on there uh, for any reason you like. Really, um, any future episode ideas or any um, feedback. <laughs> It's gonna get a, de- a deluge of abuse from from heroes. Heroes first. Like, yeah. Tim like, Kring. Tim it. Kring's gonna be livid. <laughs> like, I thought you might criticise it, but what I didn't expect was how un- unintelligible the whole thing would be—just utter nonsense. It is utter nonsense. Yeah, fair enough. Like, sorry, anyway, that Tim. is it. That is it. Thanks very much for joining us, as ever. Um, so we'll leave you now. Uh, this was attempt number ninety-four, and we still have no idea what we're doing. So sorry about that. Bye. So, if you could have any of the heroes' abilities, what would it be? I'd be the sponge. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Like 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 Peter Petrelli. Like, but what it, if you? It, but what, it, what if you really like one of them, and then you you accidentally bumped into someone the next day, and like, oh, f- oh fuck, this is a shit one. I'm stuck with a shit one. Is that how it works? You lose one. You don't get to keep them all. No, no. You have uh, to be yeah. like. I thought. Oh, no, I, no, so... I thought he had one at a time. I thought that's how it worked. Yeah, I think no. I think you're right. I think yeah. Silo get Silo gets to keep Silo all the all powers. Yeah, yeah, but he does. But he does have to eat brains, which again they try to make us forget about. But no, Silo ate brains. We all know Silo ate brains. I don't really yeah. want to eat brains. No. So okay, well I probably I probably go. You know, I love a bit of time travel. I think I'll do a, do a hero type thing. As I feel like you could just sort of do all sorts in the end. I feel like he and you know because if you time travel, he then became a samurai warrior as well because he had all the time in the world become that so be who you want to be with that great be a really good podcast presenter yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. if we had all the time in the world we'd be great at this be really good yeah <laughs>